minute, Mr. Pilmeyer. Um, just to, I know that you are, you know, grew up in Altoona, mm -hmm. and uh, can you tell me what it was like for you uh, being a, a creative person and growing up in Altoona? Well, I certainly always felt supported by mm -hmm. being in Altoona. Uh, I came from a very, very supportive family. I was afraid, I remember being very afraid to tell my parents when I was young that I wanted to be an actor. Uh, this was, I was just terrified about their reaction. And when I finally got up the nerve to tell them that, they were just so, okay, great, <laughs> fine. Uh, and they let me go away and major in theater for under, undergraduate school. And they never questioned that. And so that was, you know, not everybody is fortunate enough to have parents that were so accepting and supportive in that. Uh, Altoona to me was, growing up in Altoona was very much, very much like growing up on an island. <laughs> it was, I was very happy here. And it was also at the same time a very isolating experience. It's still a very isolated town in its own way. But it wasn't until I remember this moment when I learned that in 1987, Altoona was connected to the rest of the country by anything more than a two-lane highway. It was a very ice. It was the last town of its size in America uh, to be connected to the rest of the country, and that's an extraordinary thing when you think about it. And it was so. Uh, it was just hard to get here and hard to go someplace. Uh, or oh, that was certainly was my impression when I was growing up. So it was very much like an island, and I've always been drawn to islands for all of my life. Mm. They've been they meant a lot to me, and they've some very important things have happened to me uh, in connections with islands. And mm. I certainly think of Altoona as the first as my first island. Oh, wow! So it was, um, you know, I didn't have a lot of outside influence. So when I left here, it was I was very naive and uh, very scared um, but you know looking back on it that's okay better than other things I got a lot out of it oh good now um, how did you use your experience growing up in Altoona to further yourself in your career and your writing well probably certainly I my Catholicism. I grew up as I was raised Catholic. And mm -hmm. My family was very strict Roman Catholic, and that obviously to anyone would, would see from my writing that's clearly influenced my writing very mm -hmm. strongly. Uh, even in Hook, there are some elements of, of uh, religion, somewhat mm -hmm. a little bit tongue in cheek at times, but uh, it's there in much of my work. Mm -hmm. So that's probably influenced me more um, than Altoona, per se. Uh, I, I certainly have one of the interesting things. I have a very good ear for dialect mm -hmm. as an actor. And it also helps me a little bit in my writing. And that's because I spent so much time, uh, so much energy getting rid of my Altoona dialect. <laughs> which was tough, but I did it. Um, but uh, I've certainly been very family aware. And I use the word family in the largest sense of the word, I think, in my writing and in my life. And that's true, I, too, that's true, too, coming from, from an island like Altoona. Mm -hmm. Uh, there were certain limited numbers of people I could meet and get to know, but uh, and my family, uh, my family, particularly my father's side of the family, was a very large, expansive, and warm and welcoming family to me. Oh, and that was very, very important to me. Okay, and I heard you mention that you did attend Penn State, um, and and that was kind of a turning point in in your life at that well, point. Yes, I went to Penn State for graduate school. 
the choice to go there a lot had a lot to do with the fact that my father wasn't well at the time and I wanted to be close to Altoona mm -hmm. during those years. But it turned out to be an amazingly wonderful uh, place for me to be at that time. It was uh, the, draw, the theater department at the time was, I would say, the best that it's ever been. There were four years, a period of about four years when it was amazing because of the teachers and because of the students that were drawn there. Why we were all drawn there at that time, I don't know. Mm -hmm. But I don't believe in accidents. And one of those teachers became my mentor, uh, who, a man who just totally formed my creative life and changed my life. I am here, I think, if there was one person I had to thank in my life for being here now, it's that man. Oh, great, great. Well, um, what would you say, there, there's so many people that have come from the area. A lot of people don't realize that um, you know, just because you're in Altoona, quote unquote, stuck in Altoona, uh -huh. that you, you can still make something oh my gosh, and, and go yes. on. I mean, what, <clears throat> I think we sometimes have a skewed vision of what, uh, mm, what, what making something of our lives means. Mm -hmm. You know, now even more today than ever, this sort of sense of celebrity and fame mm -hmm. is what we all, as so many people think, is important. And ultimately, that's really not important at all. We all uh, can become celebrities in our own lives. Mm -hmm. And the important thing is to find, I think, a, um, a certain amount of stability and happiness in your life. Uh, and you can find that anywhere. Mm. Yeah, as long as you are where you're supposed to be. Mm. And sometimes where you're supposed to be is Altoona. I assume that that's where I was supposed to be for the first, you know, uh, 18 years of my life. Mm. And uh, so I think it's uh, where you're from doesn't matter. Mm. It's mm. how you live your life and what you take from from that from the experience of your life and 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 use to form to make your life to make yourself a better person. Mm. That's Great. what counts. Right. And what what advice would you give to someone that wants to? Go into the the, uh, the field of writing and, and doing what you have Boy, done for your. That's life. a hard question. I'm certainly I would say if you want to become a writer, you need to write as much as you can mm -hmm. and read as much as you can. Uh, you got to read. You have to read everything. You just have to constantly read and be aware. Become aware of the other voices that are out there mm -hmm. that have formed writing throughout history, not just contemporary writing. Read. You know, no Shakespeare, mm -hmm. no the Greeks, no, and no Stephen King. You know, mm -hmm. you got to be aware of all of that, mm -hmm. uh, and and write because a certain amount of you know craft, there's a, a, a talent is will take you so far, but learning your craft will is just as important, and you need to uh, you need to practice your craft. Mm -hmm. It's just a, it's, it's practice. It's like a sport, you know. If you want to be a good baseball player, you got to get out there and throw a ball around or hit a ball around. If you never, if you never practice, you're not going to be very good. Same thing for writing. Same thing for acting. In a way, any any craft, you have to. Uh, yes, you have your talent and your inspiration there, but you have to develop the the tools that you need. And um, uh, just two more questions, and I'll let you go. Um, just a, you're, you're well known for Agnes of God. Mm -hmm. Okay, can you tell me what inspired you uh, uh, to write you know, to write the screenplay? Well, <clears throat> really, the heart of Agnes comes from my growing up Catholic, and from my growing up in Altoona, knowing, getting to know some of the nuns who were my teachers mm -hmm. in a much more mm, personal way than a lot of students did. I was very active when I was in high school in the forensics club, which we had back then, public speaking. Mm -hmm. uh, 
uh, in my sort of area especially was dramatic interpretation, oral interpretation. And uh, I was very active in that. And every weekend we'd go to various contests in the area, competing with other high schools between here and Pittsburgh. And, uh, and our teacher nuns would always accompany us. Mm -hmm. And there, was, there were always one or two nuns uh, who'd come with us on these meets. And we'd all have to ride in the car together. Mm -hmm. Parents would pick everybody up at 5 o'clock in the morning. And, mm -hmm. and so I kind of got to know these nuns more as people than as teachers, as well as, teach as teachers. And that allowed me, I think, to, to write, to write Agnes, uh, and to write the nuns in Agnes as human beings rather than symbols. Great, great. And can you tell me a little bit about your current work? My latest project is, aside from Hook's Tale, is a, uh, an adaptation for the stage of William Peter Blatty's The Exorcist. Mm -hmm. I adapted the novel. It's opening in London in uh, a couple of months mm -hmm. and hopefully will be in New York in about a year. Okay, and just a brief synopsis of Hook's Tale. I know we, we talked about Hook's it. Hook's Tale is a memoir written by the notorious Captain Hook mm -hmm. who is really writing to convince us that he's not notorious at all, that he's really the hero of the story and that the, the, the tale that we know uh, as Peter Pan kind of got it all wrong. Mm. Yeah, great, great. Well, I think.